Hi, I'm Sue. I'm here with Calvin. We're here today to talk about how Microsoft and F5 are working together and using customer obsession to make great value and benefits for our customers. How are you doing, Calvin? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. Thank you. And thank you for the cup. You're so, welcome. Tell me, tell me what these symbols are. Well, it represents F5's uh, values or, or oh. the behaviors uh, that we're all okay. supposed to There are five of them. I'll reference a couple of them, though, because we, we have them in common. Okay. One is, you referenced it, uh, it's obsessing over customer need. You know, we're in business to delight our customers, to provide value for them, if you will. And so obsessing over their need is one of the things that you need to do to be able to be successful with that. And one of the other behaviors is standing for diversity and inclusion. Let's talk about being in someone's shoes. I think our, we, we have to walk a mile in our customers' shoes to know what they need. That's and for sure. we've been collaborating together, and I think the partnership is going well. Love the meetings we're having and the things we're talking about. And I think that really, like I said, came from customers telling us that they needed to have help. That's why we're sitting here together. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. right. Exactly. So we're telling everyone to go to the cloud, and they're like, we can't get there from here. That's right. Let's slow down. Let's talk about what we need to do. And lo and behold, F5 has a great solution. That's right. That's right. You know, we need to meet. Customers where and when and how and with what yeah. uh, they want to be met with. And uh, as it relates to you know, their, their access strategies, what they're saying to Certainly. us is, hey, look, I, I want something uh, that covers all the bases, of course. I, yeah. I, I want it all and I want it to be easy. Okay, great. Can you be a little more specific? Well, I need access for my applications that are in the cloud that are SaaS apps, but also I have a lot of applications that are still on-prem in the data center. Can you give us a solution that encompasses all of that? and working together, yeah. that's how we're doing it. Well, you know, you mentioned SaaS apps. I think that that's an area where, as Microsoft, we feel like customers are often confused and they think of Azure Active Directory as just being for Microsoft products, right. like Office and mm -hmm. Azure, and we really want them to understand that it's also available for all those SaaS apps. So we've, we've come up with a new tagline for that and saying that it's, our solution is from Microsoft, not just for Microsoft. <laughs> And, and you true. help us then create that ability to have all apps under the uh, protection of Azure Active Directory. That's right. That's right. Of course, they want access for their SaaS apps, their cloud apps, but also for their uh, you know, Oracle business apps. Maybe it's J.D. Edwards. Sure. Maybe it's Siebel. Maybe it's PeopleSoft, eBusiness Suite, or SAP HANA, or ERP applications. You know, and so since F5 is you know, ubiquitously on-prem, sitting in front of applications of that ilk, adding our APM solution in concert with Azure Active Directory gives them that full suite of access capability exactly. that they're looking for. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Of course, we obsess over customer need. You know, everybody has a different way of uh, getting this feedback, uh, this diversity of perspective from the marketplace. So F5, of course, our primary source of customer feedback is, is through our field. They are the primary advocates for our customer. They come back to headquarters and advocate on their behalf as it relates to the sort of innovation they're looking for, for us to be able to lean in on their success more. But we have found that we need to widen the aperture, if you will. And, 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 and so we've created this bespoke experience for customers uh, from all geos, of all different sizes, different implementation constructs, different technology needs, if you will. And we bring them to uh, Seattle, F5 headquarters, for a three-week event we call Aspire. We aspire to do a better job of satisfying their needs. And so we bring them in for this bespoke experience. And we get their unique perspective. We hear their voice in a unique way. And so we get a better, uh, a more diverse perspective, if you will. Sure, sure. Like, one of the things my team does is works, you know, we are, our job is to cut the distance between engineering and our customers so we can operate at cloud speed. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we do is what we call customer on-sites. It sounds a little bit like your Aspire. Um, events and what we do is we bring customers together and we've done this now for four years about every six months and We create this agenda and we have the ability for customers to hear what's coming and we learned over time that it felt like we were just in tell mode too much mm. and not in listen mode enough mm -hmm. Yeah, and then when customers started talking more they started to tell us how much they really enjoyed hearing from each other then we got to the point where they started bringing their own case studies and so most of the agenda, about three-fourths of the agenda, is actually customers talking rather than us talking. Mm -hmm. And even our, our latest iteration, what we do is we actually ask the customers for what they want the agenda to be. So they actually drive 
what it is we're going to be talking about. And we're finding that those events are just amazingly valuable for us. It, it, it energizes the team to understand what customers are really doing. Mm -hmm. And as, like you said, the customers feel heard, and they feel like they get more value than that, than even, say, an industry conference or even our own Ignite, because they have that immersion right. and an ability to really go deep, and then for us to really understand their scenarios. And, and regarding listening and, and, and Aspire, uh, something that we have learned that is super valuable is you can't just listen to seek feedback from your fans. It's as important, more important, to get feedback from folks that are less happy with you. Maybe they're not your fan, not as aware of your solutions as possible. They bring a unique perspective to the, to the table as well. We do the same. We have people who we have uh, in-product feedback, and we see whether people are dissatisfied, mm -hmm. and we get an opportunity to talk to them and give them an opportunity to really tell us what's missing, tell us what they need more of, right. and hopefully move them from being someone who's dissatisfied, of course, to you, someone who's You want to reward their bad news. You yes. Know, I, I, it's not what I wanted to hear, but it's what I needed to hear. You know, so thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So the solution that we have is secure, mm -hmm. which is you know paramount for CISOs. Baseline. But then you have the you know, users who have to have something that's easy. Right. So if it's not easy, then they'll try to go around it. We all right. know that. Yes. So we have to yes. have, you know, security balanced by user experience. So can you tell me a little bit, how does that turn, how does that turn out in your hallways? Sure. Well, uh, you know, so starting out, what got us here, customers were looking for modern authentication, SSLO, yeah. um, multi-factor authentication, conditional access, et cetera. And so we have the technology today to make that possible. Okay, so now customers are taking advantage of it. What feedback are we getting from them now? Well, okay, this is great. Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you, F5. Now we're looking for an easier implementation experience because you know our, our application portfolio is only going to grow. Uh, you know, my, my, my users have this insatiable appetite for more and more application, which increases my attack surface. And so can you make this as easy as possible to deploy? And so working in concert with Microsoft, you are informing our customers and you are informing our roadmap. We're working on simpler uh, implementation scenarios. Call it an easy button, if you will. Yeah. Well, that thing about the roadmap, it's like, Basically, our customers are building the roadmap for us, right. and so that makes right. it you know much easier for us to know that when we build it, it will be used. Right. What are the what are the primary on-premise applications that we are highly likely to find our customers wanting us to provide access for? Let's provide easy configuration out of the box for those applications, and, and so that's that. what we're striving to do. Yeah, Satya coming in and telling us and reminding us that we ought to be partner-led mm -hmm. always. That that was our you know our beginnings, and that's still our ethos. I think that's really given us the wake-up call mm. to really be a good partner, and we're really, really serious about doing that. So we've been talking about how we've been listening to customers, and now let's talk a little bit about, like, how are we listening to our employees? What are we doing to make sure that their voices are heard? Super important. It's super important because if we're going to get the most informed portfolio of insight, you know, it's overwhelmingly going to come from our from our employees. Yes, we're talking directly to customers, but 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 our but our employees are our advocates, our informers, if you will. You so, and, so we have yeah. to do that. Well, if you want to create a solution for a diverse world, it's best if it comes from a diverse team. True, that's right. And then you don't have any blind spots. Yeah. Right. And so you have to take very specific actions. Uh, this has been my experience, if you will, and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. You have to be deliberate in, in your in your actions. Uh, to make sure that other voices are heard, uh, that people feel comfortable speaking up, that they feel included. Because when they feel included, they just give that much more. They lean in on the project that much more. The, the data is indisputable. We know this now from social science. So it, that reminds me of one of the things we're doing now at Microsoft are values conversations. Mm -hmm. And that's really a way for us to make sure that respect, integrity, mm -hmm. and accountability are part of everything we do. And it's really exciting to see people really respond to that ability to like, see what they can do better or when, what are we like when we're at our best, mm -hmm. what are we like when we're not at our best, mm -hmm. in order to make the environment just more, giving everyone a, a better sense of belonging. So we're talking quite a bit about the values and the practice of it, making people feel included, uh, to get a diversity of opinion. What are some specific actions people can take? What, what sort of things uh, uh, have you seen that work, or what sort of experiences have you had on the other side of it? Oh, you know what they say? You don't always remember what was said, but you remember how you feel. Yes. Just yeah. even yesterday, I was in a meeting around a conference room table. Everyone was introducing each other. I was in between two men, and I was skipped. 
And I was thinking, seriously, in this day and age? Mm. So, you know, it's still happening. And I'm sure it was not intentional, and that's the, the notion of, like, unconscious bias. Right. But, but it does happen. But what to do about it? I think I've always said start with yourself. Like, I know that I do those same things. And so it's really important to become aware when something happens. Think about how you could do it differently. And mm -hmm. if it is really egregious, speak up and say something to someone else. Mm -hmm. Or I think there's another, even a third one, which is help someone else when something happens to them. And that's what we call allyship. Mm -hmm. So it's the ability to see something that happens and then, or even to prevent something from happening, be a person who can advocate for someone, make sure that, that you know, call on them, make sure that they are being able to be contributing, invited mm -hmm. to the right meetings, all of those things that help that person have a seat at the table. So model the right behavior, but then also specifically have a positive impact on people. Yes, right. yes. Well, I'm a voracious reader. Um, I've most recently been reading this book. Um, it's called the, the Four Paws of Spiritual Success by David Mitchie, and it's, it's actually how to apply the uh, Buddhism concepts to daily life. Okay. You, know, you can be any religion, really, and apply these concepts of, of good living. And so I was a first reader. I actually had a chance to get oh. an early copy, and I wrote my first review on Amazon. So I'm in print. I feel it kind of like David Johnson and the jerk. <laughs> 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 Free publicity. That's right. Yes. That's right. So anyway, what are you reading these days besides newspapers? A uh, business book uh, that read recently, not once but but twice, is Jeffrey Moore's Zone to Win. Uh, the principles of which we're we're using at F five actually. So I'm familiar with this crossing the chasm. So mm -hmm. this is this is new print. So tell me about it. Well, the 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 point, uh, the meta level at the time that we've got here is companies historically miss Horizon Two and Horizon Three opportunities because they run the entire business in what Jeffrey would call the performance zone, and so you invest behind revenue, and so in that kind of environment, you starve incubation opportunities for Horizon Two and Horizon Three uh, from the blood and oxygen they need to get launch velocity, if you will. So, so tell me how, what we're doing together. Where does that fit in this model? Well, actually, uh, I would argue, and I think Jeffrey would agree, that my customer at F5 is our security business unit, who owns the APM on Big IP solution. And so this is an integration that will help them satisfy their business goals in 2020. Okay. However, okay. Jeffrey would say every zone has its own quadrants, if you will, and so we are incubating. This is an incubation zone within the performance zone of taking a solution as a result of feedback from a few forward-leaning customers for the benefit of the rest of our customers, and we will be graduating it into common implementation scenarios for the rest of the customers. But maybe you would say now, going back to another Jeffrey Moore book, we've got to get him across the chasm. Oh, absolutely. It's really been a pleasure talking to you today. Likewise, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and looking forward to continuing to drive innovation for our customers. Excellent. Sounds great.